Um, yeah, welcome everybody. So this is the third module of the um, graded course on tameness and an expansion of the real field. Um, because I think Chris is talking at McMaster and I'm talking somewhere um, in Paris actually next, next Friday, we, we switched our spots. And so today, um, instead of Chris's last lecture, you have my first lecture and then Chris will give the, um, um, his last lecture next Friday. Um, I will be flying to Toronto, hopefully if everything goes smoothly tomorrow and should be at the Fields Institute to give the second port, the second lecture of this um, lecture series in person at the Fields, which I'm very much looking forward to. Um, I even have, I mean, we had this program 10 years ago and we all got a mark. I'm not sure whether the Fields Institute still does that, but I still have this mark and it's, it moves across the Atlantic a couple of times and it's still not broken yet. So hopefully, it, it survives and hopefully this is some kind of good omen for um, everything to come. Um, yeah, um, thank you for having me. Thank you for um, everyone who's already at the fields. And uh, maybe I want to also say thank you for um, Ta Tamara, Patrick and uh, Mikael, who are the organizers who are actually so far all the time at the fields and had to deal with most of the work and I'm just away and do barely anything. So hopefully I can help a little bit the months I will be there. So what I'm going to talk about um, is tameness beyond or minimality. So this is, um, I gave this um, talk in the, in, in the workshop um, at the beginning of January. And you can still go back to, if you want to watch it, and it's maybe good kind of um, introduction again, but I will not um, suppose that you have seen it. It's really the mutation of this program. So I will repeat some of these things, but I will repeat them in more detail and also with, let's say, a little bit more um, um, technology, say. So really what, we, what I want to study today, and let me start directly here, is that I want to study expansions of the real field. So the real field I will denote um, by our bar. And I will, I will in, the, in the talk, in the workshop, I made all this effort to showing that we can be without first order logic, we can define what a structure and what definable sets are using projections, Boolean combinations, and so on. I will not, I will now also you have seen all these um, courses on all minimality and Laos course and, um, and Chris's course. So I think everyone now has a feeling for what definability means in, in terms of first order logic. So I don't want to do this um, again. So what I really want to talk now, use now is this kind of the, the, the notation of expansions of the real field. So what I want to consider want to consider, let's say call this curly Z X, be a collection of subsets of various R to the ends. And really the kind of the main point of this, this program, you know, essentially that Chris has said many things about this, um, is that I want to study expansions of the real field. So that means that you add to this, um, to the real field predicates for every set X in curly X. Now we want to study this. Um, I do want to point out to really, um, if, you are, if you happen to be a model theorist and then you look directly here at this and you say, oh yeah, we want to talk about quantified elimination. Then you, then you have to directly add the, um, the order there because the order in the structure here is definable. Um, so the point where I'm somehow, if you wish, you, so you can add this, but I really wanna point out here at the beginning that I'm not so much worried about quantified elimination so far. I do care quite a bit, and you will see this throughout, about the geometric complexity um, of, um, of definable sets. So I care how complex they are in the geometric terms, maybe even in discrete set theoretic terms, so as other Borel, F sigma and so on. But um, it's not necessary so much that I care too much as, as about the syn syntax per, per se. I all, in many of these examples, you prove a quantified elimination result to deduce something about the geometric complexity of the definable sets. But in many, in many ways, we think about this program it's really in this sense, the quantified elimination, this kind of this model theory that comes in in this maybe quantified elimination proof is a tool to prove something about the complexity, the geometric complexity of the defined process, topological complexity. Um, okay, I will come to back to this kind of theme again and again. There's a really naive kind of um, 
goal you can say or can state that is behind this whole um, research programs. And the naive goal, and I like to state this, and I said, stated this in the workshop, but I state this here again, is that we want to classify. So this is this is what's called an expansion of the real field. We want to classify such expansions up to interdefinability. Interdefinability. So this is kind of, this is the naive goal. You want to, as, as mathematicians often do, we want to classify things. And here the kind of thing is the naive, the most general thing you could hope to is to do classify such expansion of the interdefinability. Let me briefly say what I mean by interdefinability, because even though you have to be a little bit careful. Um, so you can, if you take the set of all expansions, all expansions of R, this can be partially ordered. So here we say that when we have one expansion, curly R1, and we say this is smaller than curly R2, and this simply means that every set um, definable in R1, is also definable in R2. And in this case, we say that um, R1 is a reduct, it's a reduct of R2. That's not totally consistent with the usual model theoretic notation of this, if you know that. Usually a reduct means that, that um, the, um, that, Maybe you have a language in which you consider this um, expansion R, um, this expansion R2, and that then the language of this one here is um, of R1 is smaller or is contained in the language of R2. Um, that of course implies that R, um, R1 is a reduct of R2 in the case that I've stated this, but really, um, I mean, they could, the languages could be very different, but it could still be find the same sets. So really here, this is about definable sets, not so much about the language per se. And this is very much within the kind of um, spirit of what we want to do. And then we say R1 and R2 are interdefinable. Definable if, well, what you would expect, R is smaller than R2 and R1, R2 is smaller than R1. And of course, we then, we, we, I hopefully I always write, well, maybe not this, it's model theoretic, but hopefully I always write that R1 is not equal to R2 and I talk about interdefinability. So we really identify in some sense the structures with the defined, with it sets they, they are defined. Okay, let me add another page below. So this partial order, again, partial order means being, um, partial order, that this um, the partial order given by being an expansion or being a reduct um, as a maximum, as a maximal element, which is simply, if you think about this, where you take all sets, and this is pretty much when you take this collection that you want to add to the real field, is you take all the power of all, all the union of all power sets of all n. And of course, this also has a kind of a minimal element. This is simply if you just add the empty set and you don't add Philip, anything. You mean, you mean R, Philip, and not N? Oh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Corey. This is also wrong and has to put in. Okay. Okay. And so we now, as I said, the, the, the goal was, the naive goal, 
was classify such expansions up to this interdefinability. Um, Chris wrote an objection, a joint paper to Chris who wrote that this, the wrote this is that this question is that let cite this is to wake at best and intractable at worst. Intractable. Worst. Um, so I think if you if you really if you're really serious about this, you would have to take any any kind of um, um, expansion, you not only would have to understand that each of those definable sets, you would also have um, to be able to compare them. So for example, I mean, you have to read so much about homonymality, it's even a non-trivial thing to, to show that in um, to the minimal expansion of the real field define different sets. And now you would have to do this for every possible uh, um, expansion. And uh, this is surely too, in this kind of generality too hard to do. And the idea that we, that we essentially do, and this is a little bit vague, but we'll, this, this really gives us, I think, the right questions and the right results, is that what we're going to do, and I'll make this precise in the next 45 minutes or maybe one hour, is that um, essentially what we want to do is we want to replace, let's say, this, this question here, this kind of um, well, in, um, the equivalence ratio of interdefinability by some weaker relation, weaker equivalence relation. Here the idea is a little bit that, okay, maybe we, um, um, maybe we cannot do up to interdefinability, but maybe we can do this up to some kind of common um, tameless properties of um, the definable sets. Maybe one of the, we can maybe we can say that omenmal structures is something else, and that and that and that. So we can classify um, all these structures in in in, in this terms of the tameness or the kind of the properties the definable sets satisfy. Um, okay, there are two things I want to want to say here again. So in, 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 this will become a more apparent in a in a moment, but um, when we when we when we go away from this doing this up to interdefinability, um, then this becomes more, I mean, more, more and more, um, gets more and more away from what was classical model theory. So model theory in some sense is often about, um, you want to study definable sets, you want to then want to know what, um, um, and then maybe the imaginaries are in the, in the structure, um, and maybe then you want to start you want to know what is the theory and so on. Now, really here, what we care about is we care about how the geometric structure, we'll say this in a moment again, of the definable sets look like. So it's really that we really think of them as our structures as the as a collections of definable sets. And really what this problem problems we're going to study, they will not be up to interdefinable, up to by interpretability, like in a P or NTP2, they're all about by interpretability. But preserved by interpretable, we really want to study the kind of the geometric tameness in that particular structure, but that definable sets. And this will not preserve any kind of tameness by necessarily by, by interpretability or anything like this. Um, okay, um, one more thing I do want to say, and I just want to mention this. I mean, see, this is kind of this um, um, in model theory, let's say in logic in general, I think that this is really also in program in logic, there has been many older um, programs that are very, very similar. I mean, I think one of the most striking um, comparison between this program and other programs, maybe to the, this is really older program of studying expansions of press program. Really the idea of, let's say, going from some well understood object, like let's say the real field, um, and in this case, press program arithmetic to something where you add structure to it and then study and what can you add and still behave nicely. Um, this existed, um, this has been around for a long, long time, and maybe the kind of the heydays were the, the um, 80s and the early 90s. I think it's, if, you, if you're interested in this kind of general tameless program, I think it's really instructive to look at what, what was proved many years ago for the, uh, in the case of expansions um, of press program. On the, on the resource page, I, I, I cited there, put a um, survey article of um, uh, Besh there. This way around, one of them. In 2003, so really, if you care, I will not say anything more about expansion of Pressburger, but if you're interested in looking at this, you can take a look there. It's a very similar paper. 
And in the in the in, in some maybe I'll say this in a moment again, in some sense, this kind of whole tameless program, program is also very um, in spirit, very closely connected, of course, to um, um, in some sense, Shilas um, classification program in the sense of that we really want to classify then this guy's expansion. We, we care about expansion and then we care about defining the sets, not about arbitrary theories and model theory, but we still, we have this large class of objects that we want to classify up to some certain tameless conditions. And that's very, very similar to um, Shilas. Okay. So now this was all very general and very vague. And now let me come, come back to giving you some kind of particular examples. Um, so now that you have seen, I've been here since, so now more than three months in Toronto, either virtually or in person. And of course, you know a little bit about um, or minimality by now, not before, <laughs> that before. And um, so the classical examples of expansions that um, are minimal, I will not go into this too much because you've seen this, um, so often now is, of course, you can take the real field, you can take the graph of exponentiation. We have this structure, R sub a n, where you add all restricted analytic functions. And um, you can even then, if you take this expansion, you can even have x and that, and they are all O minimum. Um, of course, they, they, you can even, um, say quite a bit about how they are different, even though, although they're all um, um, or minimal. But for, for this course, that's, that's, really not the that's really not the purpose of, um, of this course. But really what we want to do here, and this continues what Chris did in his, um, in his um, lecture series on um, tank control tree, is we want to go beyond the O minimal setting. And so the classical example here, so not here but I will say a little bit more, um, is, and this I think is the first one, is the example of the real field where you take, this should better be one FD minimal, let's say larger than one, and you take in, um, in real number A, and you take A to the Z. And A to the Z is here, of course, is really just the set of all powers of a. Um, so this this structure here was was uh, was um, studied by Lau back in nineteen eighty five, and it was somehow I think the, the first example where you where you add some kind of infinite discrete set to the um, you know, to the real field, and you preserve some kind of things. Um, Lau, I think, did it for with A is equal to two and showed that then the resulting theory is decidable. He proved some quantified elimination result. I think this is also very much in spirit also what, what has been done in that kind of setting um, um, for, for the um, for expansion of press programming. And the kind of the same question was asked also for expansion of press program. Um, and but the kind of the kind of thing we want to talk about in this setting is again, what does it tell you in the case of in the reals about the definable sets? And so in this case here, these things here are not O minimal, but they will be what we'll call D minimal. Okay, let me maybe I think I can copy paste all this. Move to the next page. Okay, so um, so these are called d minimum. D minimum was not a notion that was around when um, um, when Lau proved this result in eighty five. I'm not even sure whether our minimality as such was really already around back then. Um, um, so, what, but this was introduced by um, Chris Miller, and the definition of maybe in the uh, correct late nineteen uh, late nineteen nineties, early two thousand, and the definition is the following: so, an expansion of the real field is the minimum if for every this is the kind of uniformity we need 
for every m in n and every definable set a definable now always means with respect to the expansion I'm talking about. And of course, as I should, I should say this, this is also what Chris said, um, definable here always means with parameters. And there is an N in N such that for all um, X in R to the M, I'll just write here, A of X, so the fiber over X, this is not a subset of R, is has interior or is a union finite uh, so the union of n discrete sets. Okay, so for every m, for every definable set a, um, there, there is a natural number such that either a of x is has interior or is a union of a union of n discrete sets. Um, yeah, well, there are many things I want to say. So, so there, first of all, um, this structure here, so the reals a to the z, they are the minimal. Okay. So this is, I mean, given that um, you, have a to, uh, you have the powers, so a to the z in there, and you have the field structure around, then you can really show that um, there are sets which are not, you've, um, they do not have interior, do not have interior, um, and a finite, uh, finite union of discrete sets, but not at the union of exactly one discrete set, but you can have arbitrarily uh, many, can take uh, sets of the, um, that the unions of arbitrarily many discrete sets. But what we do have is that it's always bound for a given um, findable family. Um, okay, so so that, let me really, let me restate this for, for um, um, one more time. So what he could have done or what Chris could have defined this back then, he could have also said that a structure R is the minimal, let me say this here, if, and now this would be the kind of direct analog to all minimality, if every definable subset X, or let's keep the same name, name A of R, as interior or, and in the case you would want to define all minimality, you would want to say every definable set, the subset of R either has interior or is finite. But what you now say is that every definable set is interior or is a finite union of discrete sets. Okay, and so, so in some sense, Chris could have defined it like this, but he didn't. So what Chris directly defined here was that the minimality was supposed to be automatically this kind of uniform minimality. So that you, whenever you have a defi uh, the, uh, definable set like this and all the fibers, so if you're up here, then all the fibers uh, um, have to, there has to be an end such that if the fibers are finite union of discrete sets, then they're only a union of n discrete sets. So when Chris really defined this back in the day, um, he decided to directly define this kind of um, um, uniform, before the, the minimality in a uniform way. Um, I think this is kind of unfortunate. I think that somehow sometimes I think Chris should have defined it in this uh, in this way more um, closer to um, how we define all minimality down here, because to this day we don't know whether these two statements here are equivalent. So to, or even for expanding, mean, probably not in general, but maybe for expansion of the reals, is it true that if, 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 um, if this is, um, if an expansion of the reals is the minimal in the sense at the top, well, that happens if and only if it's already defined the, the minimal in at the bottom. So maybe for now, since Chris defined this to be um, weakly uh, de-minimal, we may, might want to call this for, for now. Um, 
weekly dividend. I would really like to know um, whether these are the same things. Chris uh, thinks they're not. I'm, I'm more optimistic. I think they could actually be over the wheels. They could be the same. Of course, you know, that's one of these kind of big results that comes out of cell decomposition for minimality is that if you would do the same kind of game with minimality, you would know that. And um, here we still, even now more than 20 years on, we still don't know. Okay. Um, uh, can I ask a question? Yes, please. Um, it's Vincent. Um, so is the first definition preserved in the uh, elementary equivalence? Yeah, yes, that's what this says, yes. So essentially what, what the first definition is equivalent to saying is that um, R is the minimal if and only if everything that is elementary equivalent to R is also the minimal. And so that's, I mean, that's where the bound comes in. You can, okay. but this is, I mean, the, the second one, um, even if, 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 even if R is on the reals, we wouldn't know whether an elementary equivalent structure is the minimal too. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. Um, so this is the minimality. So now I come back to one of the things that um, um, that Chris already mentioned, but I do want to say this again, maybe just to make sure if someone just follows this course and let's watch this lecture, that so this is all self-contained. Um, so we had this example of um, um, or maybe I say this one more time before I go on. Um, so for all minimal structures, we had Gareth's wonderful course where he gave you all these kind of great consequences of all minimality. Um, for the minimality, I mean, this notion only is kind of um, a good notion if you can also get um, um, a certain nice theorems out of this kind of the minimality assumptions. And you do, I mean, you get some um, form of, um, um, cell decomposition, but it cannot be a finite cell decomposition, it has to be a countable cell decomposition. Um, that was proved originally by Chris, but there was a small error in there, and um, his postdoc Athipald um, Tamontanyalak um, corrected that recently. So you have these kind of theorems that you know from um, minimality. They're slightly weaker analogs do hold for the minimality. And, and if I have time in this course, I will come back to that and say a little bit more. But this is a good tame solution. There are consequences you get out of this. Um, and the setting now, Chris mentioned that now many times, where, um, um, where so you somehow are definitely outside the, the, um, the, the, the area of tameness is when you, when you consider the reals with a predicate for the integers or, I mean, I, I might move, sorry, I might move back and forth between that. It really doesn't matter whether you type, take the naturals or the integers, that for our purposes, the same structure because it defines the same stuff. Um, so what you can check, and Chris mentioned that also, um, you can observe, it, it's, it's, it's not that hard to show, that, um, that this structure here defines all I mean, not only, I mean, closed sets is only pretty bad, but all um, Borel sets. And also hence, even if you don't know what that is, hence every projective set in the sense of the projective hierarchy of discrete set theory. If you know what Borel sets are, then the Borel algebra generated by the open sets, every projective set is if you start with the Borel sets, and now you close this off on a complementation and projection. Um, so this gives, gives you a, larger hierarchy and all of the script is set here of this is, is, um, is done usually in that, um, in that hierarchy. Um, this is really, from a geometric point, this is not good. One of the thing, I mean, there's this kind of standard examples of why I kind of think this is bad. First of all, all Borel sets means um, that all um, closed sets are defined, but this means that all continuous functions continuous functions because their graphs are um, just closed sets are definable. And as, as, as we know from analysis, there are many weird continuous functions that are not um, tame or nice geometric in, in the geometric sense, and at least not in the sense that um, we think when we talk about minimality or expansions or, or semi-algebraic sets, I mean, this kind of the kind of essence of this um, 
the statements comes back from, from semi-algebraic geometry after all. And continuous functions can be super weird. So, so they even that you have this space filling curves. So they map something one dimensional continuously onto something two dimensional. And this is really, that's, that's not something um, we can handle very well. At least not in this kind of number of the tools from tank geometry. And um, even, I mean, one of the kind of um, important things, I will see this throughout, is that we, we do want that um, the sets we consider, at least that we know that they're like measurable. I mean, ominous, definable sets and ominous structures are many things. They're also surely like measurable. So they're, they're very nice. And, but for these kind of sets, the things that are definable. Um, in this structure, we don't even know that. And not only we don't know that, it's independent of ZFC. So is every, the question whether is every set definable in this structure, the uh, back measurable, this is independent. Thanks to Solovey, I think, independent. ZFC. Um, so this is this is really bad. Um, and sometimes I mean I, I like I like to call this, I mean Chris likes to call this whole thing here the projective hierarchy. Um, I like to call this um then it's really second order arithmetic. That's what it is. Because you kind of of course can code subsets of the integers as real numbers. Um, I do want to give you one more example here before before I move on, and um, I think that the um, so if you look at again look like for a second just remind us ourselves what um, what minimality was. So minimality was a condition on um, definable sets in the line. So they either so if it's all minimal, then this has to be either interior. And then this set X either has test step interior or is finite. Then this, okay, always this weak deminimality that we want is either interior or, um, sorry, or. Um, Or a finite union of discrete sets. Okay, and so so now the, what you see here, it's a little bit this kind of all this what we're doing here is we're keeping the statement on the left, and we kind of adding some kind of condition of smallness. And so we, as you can see from from more minimality with the um, so where the smallness was really small was just finite. We go to the slightly larger thing, which is finite union of discrete sets. And of course, you can play this game more. You can keep relaxing the notion of um, of smallness. And maybe the, the smallest or the largest notion of smallness, maybe this is the right way of saying this, is that if you want to, um, so you could say either the set is interior has interior. Or and now you have to say um, say the the minimal um, the, the, what what your smallness is and the minimum thing you can ask well again this is reasonable um, we hope to make precise by this is a minimal uh, is that you ask the set to be nowhere dense so either you have interior or you are still small the small means you're nowhere dense and that's really the minimum of course the finite union of discrete sets is um, is nowhere dense. Finite sets are nowhere dense. Countable, uh, well, countable doesn't have to be, but um, so to these kind of sets, they they um, they keep being um, nowhere dense. And this kind of notion here, this kind of the minimal um, notion, is um, I, I think Chris suggested this, and I want to call this like this too. Um, is um, is called noiseless. Anton Giorgio Franciero, oh, sorry, um, had a different. Um, name for it, but I, I, I think I agree with Chris that we have too many minimals. And um, he calls that um, interior minimal. Okay. Um, and you can see that if you, if you, if you look at, at this kind of structure here, this kind of structure where you all agree that this is kind of wild from our 
sameness program point of view, um, that there's definitely even doesn't satisfy this kind of minimal tameness condition here. Um, because if you, I mean, if you have the field around and you have the integers, and then you then you clearly find also the rationals. Just take the image of the fraction. Uh, just take the fractions. Okay. Um, I do want to give you. I do want to give you an example. Um, so I gave you an example of or minimal structures. I gave you an example of de minimal structures. There are many more, but maybe we come back to that in a little bit. I gave you an example of this while structure here with the integers. So now I really would like to give you an ex one example um, of something that is neither de minimal, that is not de minimal, but satisfies this condition. Okay, maybe get in here. New slide here. So, so this is due to um, Friedman, Kurdiger, Miller, and Zweisiger from 2008. And so, what they found, they found the uh, um, they, they showed there is an open set U such that if you add this to the real field, this defines, okay, this maybe um, defines, I would say what that means, Borel isomorph. Of this, of this one, and <laughs> yet every yet is noiseless. Let me make a It's noiseless. So every definable set in this, every unary defined set in this in the structure, is either has either interior or is nowhere dense. So really, what 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 they what they put they put some kind of counter set to so maybe the kind of you think about the, the complement of an open set is a closed set, and you should think of this set they're adding there is a counter set. And the counter set is up as a, think of your mid, traditional middle third counter set is something that truly doesn't have, uh, it's truly not a unit of finitely many discrete sets. And so the, um, this set U is really the, the complement of such a set. So here you have really some kind of well behaved, I mean, reasonably well behaved. Um, Structure at least in the in the line, um, so, but that is not the minimum. And then even here, that I, I do want to point out here, um, this is a good example of what we got, what we want to um, talk about. So we really care about the definable sets and the geometry of the definable sets. So if the if the definable sets are always something um, uh, something nice, model or some very small thing of noise. Like in this case, this kind of open set. That, that's per, that's per, uh, this kind of, there's a case of noise where you have this kind of interior or, or nowhere dense. That is, that is fine with us. If, on, if, if you're on, on this kind of noise, on this small noise, all helploids use, that's perfectly fine with us. So the, in this case, the, the, it's Borel isomorph. So it's really saying that in the structure, we interpret in a very rather nice way second order arithmetic. But still, the geometry of the defined with set stays, stays fine. That's perfectly fine for us. For model theorists, I mean, so if you think about this is in terms of Schiller's classification, that is, of course, rather undesirable because I mean, you want this, this, this structure that you have here um, satisfies all these model theoretic wildness properties like IP, TP2, whatever they are. From a model theoretic point of view, the structure is as, is as bad as um, um, the reals with, with the integers. So it's second order arithmetic. But for us, it's not because the defined with sets will behave much better from a geometric point of view. So this is the vast difference. But so this is really the whole tameless program. We'll come back to this many times. This is about definable sets. It's really, it's like, I think it's, 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 um, it's not model theory in the sense of that our notions here are um, um, 
or notion of tameness is preserved up to by interpretability or by uh, that interpretation. Philip, a question? Yes, please. Uh, uh, is it clearly, you, you actually mean defines and not interprets a plural isomorph? It's actually a definable set and not a quotient? It's, it, it, it's, um, it's a definable set. So it's not a, it's not a quotient. They right. define it, I'm pretty sure, pretty sure that they define that set. You don't have to quotient out here. All right, thanks. So really on this, see, you have this, if you think about this, you have this counter set weirdly lying in there. And on this counter set, a counter set is, I mean, isomorphic to the to reals. On this, you really define multiplication. But this all stays in this counter set and cannot escape this counter set. And the counter set is just too small for the field to make it big. So it's really not, it's not, not even an um, interpre um, interpretation. Okay, um, so the... Um, So I'm always saying here this kind of, I mean, uh, that this is not model theory. I'm a huge fan of model theory. It's um, just, I wanna make clear that this kind of, um, they've been proving the theorems that are there and then these kind of theorems are really about defined about sets. Um, so what was, so where are we in now? So maybe the next thing I wanna state is somehow a less ambitious um, goal. We had this naive goal that we wanted to, to um, classify all these expansions up to um, interdefinability. And so the now the kind of the first less naive goal, and this is really, um, this is really goal. This is uh, let's call this Miller's program. Uh, is the following. So what what Chris asked, and he has been asking this for a long time. Um, what kind of geometric tameness? Can be deduced, be deduced from the non definability of X. So, the idea that, that Chris originally had was that, okay, so we all agree that if you have the integers, then everything goes uh, haywire. So, what, 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 what happens if we turn it around? So, suppose we need to take an expansion about the, the, that does not define the integers. Um, can you, can, can you conclude any kind of geometric tameness for the definable sets in there? Um, the first, I think, the, I, mean, I do want to mention this here, and I'll put the reference here um, um, on, the, on the resource page. Really, the first paper in that direction is, is, from, is from Chris. Um, and this was this is a paper called Avoiding the Projective Hierarchy in, I think, hierarchy in expansions of the real line, but I think by discrete sets of iterative or by sequences. Sets, I think. And so this is kind of the question. I will come back. I will um, we'll talk a little bit more about this um, in a little bit. I'll give you some kind of answer and then maybe later then also prove. And um, so this is really Chris's idea of what, what um, um, well, where this I think all comes from. We can even state this in more, a little bit more general and I, what I would hope to do here and that I hope this program eventually also delivers is not only that you let's say that you get some, you have to, you don't define the interest, then you get some tameness, but that what you really can do is something like, okay, we know that the sorry. integers are bad. Sorry again, do you mean the yes, non-definability of the integers or? Yes, sorry. Yes. yes, please. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Yes, sorry. No, please. Sorry. I'm copy pasting it and then make, still making errors. Um, so what we at least have, then can we classify expansions of R? Well, and really we, that we wonder the, the, we know what what they do on the integers that so we restrict ourselves as those that don't define the integers. And we want to classify them up to, so they should classify some tameness because they don't define the injured, at least if um, Miller's answer is correct or Miller's program is successful, showing that there is some kind of thing that is satisfying. Um, then we want to want to ask, can we classify those up to some common notion of things? I'll draw a picture here in just one second.
again, so I mean, for example, I mean, I say this one last time about the connection to model theory. The um, if you want to class, if you want to um, classify up to some common notion of um, tameness and noises is is um, is one of these tameless notions, then um, I mean, interpretability. Go, I mean, you really you have to stay with the definable sets. If you uh, if um, if you're with the geometric part of the definable sets, you cannot hope to get anything more in terms of model theory. Yeah? In terms of let's say Schiller's uh, combinatorical model theoretic terms, this is really property about the definable sets, geometric property of the definable sets. Right. Um, And very much in the spirit of all minimality. I mean, I think this is maybe, um, maybe I should say this too. Um, this may be um, underappreciated for, but the, um, see, I'm, I'm really a post or minimality model theorist. So I, um, I started looking into model theory when, when was it? When I started my PhD in 2003 or something, or 2004, um, 2005. But um, their own minimality was well established, was a big thing. So um, for me, all minimality is, 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 is more, more natural as a kind of a background to, to what I'm doing. than let's say the, cl the classification or uh, coming classification theory of Shilau, model theory from the seventies or something like this. So really, I, I think of myself not necessarily as this kind of classical model theorist, but really as a model theorist who came out of, I mean, was, was born after, after all minimality. And so has this kind of much more definability viewpoint um, than, um, than part of the Shilam with the model theory has. Okay, so the picture I wanna do is really inspired from, um, um, from Gabe's Conan, it's a picture of the um, model theoretic universe, which is really a fantastic map. If you haven't checked out, you should um, Google, um, Google that. And so the, this should be here, these expansions, our expansions of the real field. And so here we have this kind of structures that define the integers, from n or z, I should keep writing the same. And then here is somehow out to the n in there, but there might be many more. Then we said over here that maybe these are the, the best ones, that these are the kind of the more minimal ones. Once they lie here, so here we had the real field, here we had reals with exponentiation, R sub a n and so on. Then the next best thing was here, this kind of the minimal. Um, like with the reals from A to the Z. And then here was maybe noiseless. An example here was the called the FKMS example um, with this kind of uh, you add this open set or the common let's say that it's U, if you add the complement that's what you probably would call K, and so we have this picture here. Okay, I will say a little bit and then we will say more about what about this part here in just a moment. Um, yeah, I will say this now. Um, do we do we usually take a break or so something in between? Krista said. Sure. Well, it's up to you. Mm -hmm. We take a break, five minutes. Or... Okay, then let's take a break here. This is at least a good spot to stop and get some water. So I'll start again in five minutes. Let me start again. Okay, so the, um, let me see. Um, I maybe I put this in the chat. I, so I talked about, um, talked about Gabe Conan's map of the model theoretic universe and you can compare that. Um, so if you wanna check, you can check it out under this link. It's Gabe's Conan map of the model theoretic universe and how this compares to this kind of body findability theoretic universe, maybe over the reals. Um, so come back here. So this is, this is the map. And I wanna say a little bit more about this map. And but before I do so, I have to introduce, I have to talk a bit about, the, about open cores. Um, I will not talk too much about them throughout this course, but I have to, I have to mention a few things. Um, 
about, um, about them. So this is a notion introduced by um, Chris Miller and Patrick Speisegger in their um, 99 fundamental paper. It's also on the resource page, the link. Um, and I think that I think this is research actually done also at the Fields Institute. They did in the I think what is the 98 program. I wasn't there, there, I wasn't around yet. I was, I was here for a, or a year of means at the Field Institute in 2009, but this was, was another one again, something like 11 years before that. And I think that this where they did the research for, um, for this around this definition. And so what is it? So now given an expansion R can really don't have to be the field. I mean, this, I mean can take really just an expansion of the real line if you want to, or any topological structure. Um, then we define um, the open core of R. We write R and then the circle as the reduct the reduct in the sense that we use the book reduct of R generated by all open sets. So again, what that really means is you take the real, field, the real field or when you take the real line and then you put on all the definable, um, uh, by all definable, open sets. Take all definable open sets in R and you put this into this new structure. And this is this is a redux because it defines fewer things. It defines all the open sets that are definable in R, but maybe probably even more, I mean with the complements and so on. But it's it's um, definitely everything that is defined in this open core is also defined in R. Um, since the complement of open sets is closed and complementation is just taking the negation, if you have that all open sets are the, the an open set is defined, if all definable open sets are in the open core, that means also all definable closed sets um, are in the open core. So you could have co called this, um, could have also defined this the closed core or the open core as the redux generated by all closed definable sets. That's perfectly. I think I do think that open core is more catchy, but it, um, sometimes I care more about the closed sets. Um, so in my notation, this is one point. And then the ways that Chris and Patrick introduced that, and we can somewhat take this as a tameless notion as well, if you like. Um, so what you can, for example, say, and this, I think that what they also introduce is say, um, you can say that in um, an expansion R has, now you put in here your favorite tameless notion, let's say, O minimal, D minimal, noiseless, and then open core. So we say, this is a different, this part is a definition. We say R has O minimal, D minimal, or noiseless open core if the open core is, if the open core is either O minimal, then we call it O minimal open core, D minimal, or if it's noiseless. So the idea here is, is that, okay, um, so maybe you have a defined build set X in R, in R in subset, subset of R to the N, definable in R, then this might be a very complicated set per se. But then if you take the closure, of this, so the usual topological closure for the topological closure in the sense of the order topology on the reason, the standard topology, then this is definable in the open core. I mean, because it's a complement of an open set, so it has to be defined, the open set, and the complement has to be defined, so X bar has to be definable itself. So that what you should think about is what this really means is that you have this kind of weird definable set X in out, in lying out to the end defined by an R, but if you have O minimal open core, then what you do is you simply take the topological closure and bam, it looks nice again. 
because in the nominal structures, you have cell decomposition. So that means that in, if you have a definable set in here, and if you, and if you look, go, for, go a little bit far back and look at it, then it looks like an O minimal set, set in a definable O minimal structure. But if you then go look really closely, then you see, well, it's not this definable O minimal structure, but you have this kind of dense and codense thing lying in this O minimal, yeah, o minimal set, so this, set, this finite union of sets. And so what this really says is that if the open core is nice, that means that the original structure is not is, is nice up to some noise. That that is the that is the idea behind that. Um, and so I will do two things. So first of all, what I want to do now is I want to give you um, um, a few examples. There quite a, there's a quite a long list of um, literature on this, and then I will come back for a moment and then connect this to this kind of the picture that we have here at the top. And then I'm probably done for today. So, um, so the first thing I will do, I will give you a few examples of that. So let me move this to the next. So the first and the most classical example is, um, is if you take, sorry, take the reals, the real field and add to it, Add to it the real algebraics, so that, that these are um, this is the real closure of the rationals. Or if you don't know what the real closure is, this is really just you, you take all the um, elements in the reals that are that satisfy a, um, a non-trivial polynomial equations over the rationals. And so this structure here. There you can say this, this cannot be O minimal because it has a rational. So it has this kind of dense and codense set in there. It cannot be D minimal because the rationals neither have interior or, or a finite union of discrete sets. It cannot be noiseless because the rationals are, um, do not have interior, but they're not nowhere dense. However, this structure here has a nice open form. And the, the easiest way of stating that is that every Say, oh, it's a, you can say open set or closed sets is both true in, in both cases. Subset of R to the N definable in um, this structure here is definable already just from the real field, so it's semi algebraic. So that means all the, you, if you generate the open core of this structure and really all that you get are the semi-algebraic set others. And so really what this says, that means that the open core of this structure here is um, just the real. Um, this, is, um, this is done in the paper of this in the, Pairs paper of Lau from 99, where he studies um, dense pairs of all minimal structures. And if you look at this, um, this is where you can see this. This is these are both real closed fields. And so this is um, it's a pair of 98. Thank you. Um, there is this really um, the real both are models of real close, both are real closed fields, the so models of RCF. And so then um, it's an example of dense pairs of an minimal um, theory, in this case, the recourse fields. Um, then another example, let's say, I want to give these few examples so that you get the spirit here. So the, um, if you take the reals with um, of dense, finitely generated subgroup, of um, multiplicative group, then um, the open core again is just the real field. Um, this was um, work of again Lau and I had Gunaiden. 
And um, I mean, well, they show they, I think, I'm not 100% sure whether why, why this the fact um, is proven that the, or were first, first proven that the open core is actually just the reals. Um, but they definitely showed that this structure is model theoretically tame. And from that, one can easily deduce that the uh, open core is uh, precisely uh, from that proof. Um, and then one last example, and then I tell you what they all have in common. One last example here is that um, you can also take um, any or minimal expansion of the reals and add a DCL basis of that. So if you don't know what that means, then so let me write this out. So if you have an ominum expansion of this one here of the real field, and if I is a dense DCL basis, if you don't know what that means, just think of this as a real field. So this is a real field and take this to be a transcendence basis of the reals and ask that to be dense. Then this is, then this, uh, this is due to Dolich, Miller and Steiner on that this the open core which just say the result that the open core in this case is again all minimal, but in this case it's really just the all minimal redux. So this kind of whatever you minimal thing you started with, it's called uh, tilde, then you get this back as an open core. Um, so what, what, what do they have in common? I think that all these examples, of, um, all these examples um, uh, work by, let me write this down, work by the model Lang principle. I would call this the model Lang principle. So the, in each of these cases, you have this, you have a substructure and the induced structure, if you can not go to too much detail of the model theory, but so if you don't get this, that's perfectly fine. Induced structure from the, from, from, from the bigger structure is always well understood. So in the case of the reals with, the, with algebraic, the, the induced structure is more or less, more, um, the rest of the structure that comes from the field from the field beforehand, because the rational the, the real algebraics were a real closed field. In this case here, because it's uh, because and this is where the name comes from, because of the um, theorem of the model line, um, perhaps the theorem, um, the induced structure on these multiplicative subgroups is really just the original multiplicative group structure. Again, something we understand can handle very well. And then finally, here in this case, you have this basis, this transcendent basis, and this is, this has no algebraic relation whatsoever. So in this case, the induced structure really has there's there's no new induced structure on this transcendent basis, the, um, except for the intervals. So there's no new algebraic structure induced on this um, transcendent basis, and that's why you can handle. They all work um, uh, because because of that. Um, a year ago or so, no one. Two years ago, you know, um, Alexi Block Gorman, myself, and Elliot Kaplan, we wrote this paper um, called Theories Setting Satisfying a Model Lang Condition. And this makes this kind of idea how they all are common um, a little bit more precise. Philip? Yes, please. Is, is open core property that is preserved under elementary equivalence? Uh, all minimal no. open core. All minimal open core. Um, uh, no, no, it shouldn't. Uh, but that's whether we know that. If you add something like so, to Chris, 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 um, maybe I'll answer this better next time. But um, Dolich Miller and Steinhorn, they, they proved this theorem that if you have uniform finiteness and um, um, uh, definable completeness, then you get minimal open core. And definable completeness and uniform finiteness, they are preserved under elementary equivalence because it's a first of the XM machines. But I don't think that um, um, open core is um, preserved. Maybe I give so you- two, So two elementary equivalent structures might not have elementary equivalent open core. This is the point. Yes, I think you could have something like um, that you have um, no uniform bound on the finite sets. And you don't see mm -hmm. the infinite discrete set just in the model, but maybe in some elementary extension. I see. All right. Thanks. Something, something like this. Um, 
but I have to look up whether actually there is an there, whether there is a good and easy example for that. But I come back to this kind of model theoretic questions in just one second. Um, I do want to point out, I want to give you one last example so that you can see. Um, so while this all was O minimal open core, you can also have D minimal open core. So for example, one of the structures that Ian Gneiden studied in his PhD thesis um, was, was, was this structure here. And if you take the open core of this structure, then you get back the structure that we talked about before that Lau back in the day um, studied. Um, and this one we said is D minimal. So that this here is an example of a structure that's D minimal open core. So essentially, can you see you have this kind of, this is a discrete subgroup of, and this here is a dense subgroup. And by, by taking the, the open core, you forgot to forget about the, the noise. So you forget all about this kind of um, um, dense, dense um, subgroup. Okay. So what was next? Yeah. Um, Again, here you, you, I gave you this example of, um, in the case of this kind of this, the, the FKMS example, we added this open set to the real field and this interpreted second order um, arithmetic. So you can see even there, we don't have um, any kind of, um, um, and, and it was still noiseless. So we had this kind of weak tameless condition, but from a model theoretic point, because second order arithmetic was, I mean, defined the interpretable, or defined the isomorph for this, um, this was really bad. This can happen with open core too. So really, if you take any expansion of the reals, the immunal expansion of our bar, I think it works also in the case of the group, then you can always find an expansion. There's an expansion, expansion call it S of R, such that um, such that S interprets, he is really interprets, um, second order arithmetic. Theory of this, yet the open core of S is R. This is actually not that hard to show. This is from a, from a, this is a paper for, a, for myself, um, my student Nell, Travis Nell, and Eric Walsberg. And the idea is pretty simple. Um, it's, it's that you, we saw this kind of um, structure with open core, but we added this transcendent spaces. And more or less, you can put whatever, whatever structure you like on, the, on, on a, as well. You take an equivalence relation, such that each of the equivalence class on the take this transcendent spaces, take an equivalence relation on this, on this transcendent spaces, such that each equivalence class is dense in this transcendent spaces. Then you put any structure on that. And so the kind of the, the, the whole structure really can, I mean, if you take the closure of this, it cannot tell it apart. But there's all this kind of noise. And if you take the closure of that, this all goes away. It's kind of, it really cannot see it. Um, okay. So these are all these kind of impo uh, important examples of structures with open and open core. Um, I will not talk too much about them in going going forward. Um, what I'm some of we're still missing a little bit in this in this one really for for these structures with open core. These are very natural structures, um, but we're still missing a little bit um, what we actually can do with them. So as we're still missing a little bit of the application. And we're also missing some of, um, well, in general, I've said that is a bit, we have a good overview now over expansions of the, the reals. Um, we don't have a good grasp of um, what, what precisely the, um, how we could classify or something like this, this expansion with O minimal open core. And part of this kind of difficulty is because, because of this theorem from a model theory, if you really want to do something model theoretic, you can put anything on there. So this would then boil down to doing essentially any kind of model theory in these structures. Um, and so that, that's where we, um, 
um, that's where that's where we are currently in this kind of um, research project. But what what can still do, and I would just want to mention this here briefly in um, in a paper. This is a paper of um, Pantelis, my myself, and Ihan. What we did in this, I think, it's it's more interesting in this case. So I think things to do there is um, we did, we gave it. We started a more de detailed study. Um, analysis of definable sets in these examples. So studying what kind of um, notions or what kind of geometries are definable there, what kind of giving a, let's say, clearer cell decomposition like, we call it the structure theorem on definable sets. But um, very, it's very, very interesting direction, but this is really not um, so much what I want to do in this um, talk, I want to on this course. Um, what I do want to do is um, I want to come back now to what I want to use or, or how I want to use this open core for the picture I've been drawing. So for that, it's, it's important to go back to this paper of, um, of, of Miller and Speisegger. So I mentioned that the Miller and Speisegger, they introduced this notion of an open core and they proved something with it. And so one of the things that hopefully I'm stating it in the way that um, let's go to the new page hopefully stated in a way is correct. So what they showed, so this is Miller and Speisegger from 99, is that that R expand the field such that every definable open subset can take close as a part of this the same um, of R um, of R, it's just nine, sorry, has finitely many connected components then R is only one. Then R then open core is only one. This is usually not, I mean, so they will say, okay, well, that, that's, uh, um, that's maybe the easiest way of showing that something is open core, but that's not why, it's not usually not, but, but um, that's not why I stated. Um, but I really, what, I like this theorem quite a bit, as will be important for what I say in a moment, is that, um, so what this shows in the case of woman minimality, that if you know, if you want to check whether something has open core, really, you have to make sure that the open sets and stuff that you start with and behave nicely, so I um, have finally many connected components. If um, um, so, so if a priori, I mean, I think okay, maybe then the, the open sets are nice. But what is what? What kind of guarantee do you have that if you then have to take the complement, the projection, and so on, that the sets stay nice? And that's what they, they proved actually that you get this. You get that you get generated this whole open core, and it all stays stays. Um, 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 nice. So it's a bit, I mean, I'm gonna come back to that in a moment. I mean, what really, what I think of the open core in some sense, or what I like to think of the open core is um, a little bit like the Borel hierarchy in set theory, just in a geometric fashion. So it starts with the open sets and then you do this, all these kind of, um, well, you can do a little bit more, but you can do the kind of, you can do complementation, it's not just taking infinite, um, infinite um, countable unions, but you really can do projections. But it's, it's you start with these open sets and then you let go, how complicated does it get? In, in the Borel hierarchy, it gets pretty complicated. And then if you put it in the projective hierarchy, it gets essentially arbitrarily complicated. But for the open core, if you impose already good conditions on the open sets, then this is preserved, at least for these kind of special conditions. In particular, if you have finally many connected components, then, um, um, this is preserved, um, then you get that everything that is generated by the open sets. So your definable Borel hierarchy is completely well behaved. It's all on that. And, um, right, we really look at that. So in particular, um, okay, and this is really, the, this will be a screen in just a moment. Um, the one thing I do wanna, wanna add here, set a number for that. So, um, 
of course, one more thing about the open core is that, so, so far we always started with something. So we start an arbitrary structure and we then go back to the open core, we somehow go down. But if you have an expansion, and this is kind of you know, obvious remark, if you have an expansion that is already so of R just by closed sets, closed sets. And I throw in open sets, it can also be open sets, it doesn't really matter. Then, um, and then of course, the open core is just R itself. As you, you already, everything that you add is already, it's, uh, and you go, if you go to all the open sets, you get already all the things that you added to the, to the real field. And so this, this is the same thing. So it's um, an open core in some senses, if, this, um, if you talk about open cores and you some also read what you're really talking about is about arbitrary expansions by closed sets. Um, one thing that Chris mentioned in his, in his, um, in his uh, lecture is that um, you can you get even a little bit more. So by a result of, um, I think that is how you pronounce this, and Miller, in a short paper in, I think, in Real Analysis Exchange, they showed that definable combinations, Boolean combinations, nations of open sets are actually, now that we swap the Boolean and the definable, um, uh, are Boolean combinations of definable open sets. Okay. So that means if you have a defined, if you have a definable combination of open sets, so if you take an expansion by Boolean combinations of open sets, then the open core is still the same. So let's call um, Boolean combinations of open sets that give this a name. And we call this maybe not the best, but constructible. And um, so then what this says that uh, thus, if R is an expansion by constructible sets. Then the open courses. Okay. So really, what what I want to get out of this, and this is kind of the point I wanted to make here, is that um, studying open course is really the same as studying expansions by constructible sets. Okay. So now what I wanna do is I wanna, okay. Now I think I'm ready to state a big conjecture. So the big kind of goal of the whole program and for me this is what is called Miller's conjecture and this said and so now let um, R be an expansion of the real field that does not define Five n, or z, whatever you prefer, then the open core is noiseless. Or equivalently, I really want to state this here again. If 
let's say let R be an expansion by of arrows, of course, by constructible sets. And this this expansion does not define n, then r is noiseless. Okay. And so, so if you, if you, if you, if you, if you let me draw this picture here again, so really the picture we had here is that. Um, I'm not writing the Z. So it be, if these are all the expansions of R, and now we, 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 we consider just the constructible, uh, just the ones that, have, that are expansions by constructible sets, and you have the integers here, and then really what this would mean, this would mean something like here, we have the all minimal ones, as we said, then they come the minimal ones, and then, okay, there you might be, even want to find some good, classification of the noises ones, but then this noises ones really go up to uh, up to here. And that's what you would want to have. And that even, even if you do not want to just talk about constructible sets here, you really just don't want to worry about constructible sets, you can say about the open core. So you could say that um, the open core is either o minimal, d minimal, or noiseless. And this would be really good because when you say, okay, we have this kind of noiseless, even in, even to be even the open pores noiseless, it would be say we have this noiseless structure, and probably in this noiseless structure, there's the kind of sets look reasonably well behaved, as uh, is geometrically, and the, in this kind of, in, the, in the structure we're living. And the only thing that you can add is in these kind of um, uh, sets that live in a noiseless structure, you can add dense and codense noise. That essentially, if that wall would be true, that would be just a very very good understanding of any kind of um, expansion of the reels. I think this would, that would be really true. Um, that would be really striking. Um, note that, let me say this here, um, every, let's put it like this. If you, if you take any closed set for that matter, uh, either has interior, interior or is nowhere dense. So if you, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you think about this, okay, if you want to show, so yeah, you know, if you want to show that um, if you don't define the integers, you, you, and you want to show that the open core is noiseless, then you have to show that for every set um, in this open core, every defined set either has interior or is nowhere dense. And somewhere you have that for closed sets. So what you would have to do if you want to prove this kind of Miller's conjecture, and that is kind of a very, um, very um, kind of high level idea, what you would have to do is you would have to follow Miller and Speisiger's path here. And you would show that, so here they show that if you know that the open sets are finitely many connected components or the closed sets are finitely many connected components, then they deduce from that that the whole open course will behave. So here you would have to do the same thing. You would have to replace this kind of assumption of minimality on the open sets by not defining the integers. And you have automatically closed sets are um, left in the interior and over dense, same for open sets. But, um, but then, you, then the only thing you have to make to true is that you are on this very low level of this open core and you have to be able to show that you can move this up all this way through the open core through all these kind of iterations of um, complementation and um, projection. So you have to prove that this holds for the whole open. Okay. What do I want to say more? Um, I do want to say, of course, I mean, may I mention this here, the, 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 um, um, is this is necessary to, to have the, that the structure does not define the integers. Um, yeah, sure, of course. I mean, if you take the reals and you add n, then um, this is an expansion by a constructible set, if all means. And, um, but if, you, if, it, if it's truly not noises, as we said, because the rational side of time. And this, I mean, I really, I, I think this kind of formulation is, is for me, I think this uh, is really that 
in this, what you're saying is that um, if in some sense, if well, maybe this is the equivalent formulation here, what this really says is that if you have an expansion of the reals and if this is, and you don't, and, and you add no noise, at the beginning, so you see these kind of X's that you add, you add, don't add noise. Well, you, well, you either add no noise or you add, sorry, this is good. So if you, if you have an expansion here, if you take the, the real field, and if you add noise and you only have two possibilities, either you add enough noise that you get the whole projective hierarchy No, sorry, if you, if, you, if you add noise, then either you add this, uh, the whole, you add the whole project hierarchy, or you're not in, um, or new, new, uh, sorry, what do you want to say? I wrote this up. So if no noise is added and the edit sets are not complicated enough to, yeah, that's, that's what I want to say. So if, you add, if no noise is added to the real field and then the edit sets that you put in there are not complicated enough to add the whole projective hierarchy, then no noise can be generated at all from the structure from the sets you added. So if you if you add sets to it, and um, this is these are not obviously you know, not obvious condens and codens, but they're really constructible sets which are not supposed to be not with noises. And you don't define every kind of noise, then no noise whatsoever can be defined. That's really what what this kind of set. Um, Okay, I think this is actually a good um, place for me to stop. I think I stopped a little bit earlier. Um, but otherwise, I get running over time. So, so on, on, mon on Monday, I will be hopefully at the Fields Institute and continue this um, in person in the lecture room. And I will say a little bit more about this kind of um, what we have towards um, Miller's conjecture. And I will say a little bit more about what, what um, what happens if you don't work over the field but just over the real additive group? But that I want to do um, next time. Thank you, Philip. Thank you, Philip. Mm -hmm.